The Eliani general slammed his fist on the war room table as the hollow showed human worlds burning. Our fleets are shattered, our worlds conquered, the Karnati is crumbling. He turned desperately to Pryla, his mandibles quivering. The humans are our only hope now. The Karnate's need was dire indeed. Hours ago, an unknown alien invasion fleet had burst out of subspace and attacked both Eliani and human fringe systems. World after world fell to ruthlessly efficient attackers. Powerful gravity beams smashed orbital defenses. Drop pods rained from the sky, disgorging hordes of armored killing machines. Cities burned, civilians fled and died. Even the mighty Eleani fleets, pride of the Kanati, broke against waves of swarming attack drones and devastating singularity weapons never seen before. Outmatched, the Eleani fled, abandoning worlds, losing entire systems. The invaders marched forward, unstoppable. Only the humans stood firm against disaster. Only they fought on defiantly, even as all hope seemed lost. Outgunned, outnumbered human fleets and soldiers held the line against the implacable foe. They bought time with blood and steel, slowing the invaders' advance at terrible cost. But they couldn't hold back the tide forever. Without help, the human defenses would crumble, the Confederacy would fall, and the Eliani would be next. Pryla slowly turned to the general, resignation etched on his features. We need the humans, he agreed bitterly. May our ancestors forgive us? He triggered the communication system. Get me Diplomat Williams, now. The peace summit was hastily suspended as the Eliani scrambled to mobilize their fleet in response to the shocking news of the surprise attack. Pryla's mandibles clicked rapidly as he pored over the incoming reports, his compound eyes darting across the data pad. He turned to Brian, who stood nearby, his face grim. The invaders have been identified as the Xerathi, Pryla said, his voice tight with tension. They are a fanatical spacefaring race, hell-bent on purging all other civilizations from the cosmos to appease their twisted star gods. Brian frowned. We need to work together to counter this threat. The Confederacy is willing to coordinate our defenses with the Eliani. Pryla shook his head, his antennae twitching. The Eliani will handle this on our own. Our superior technology will allow us to repel the Zirathi without human assistance. Brian opened his mouth to argue, but Pryla cut him off. This discussion is over, human. We have a war to fight. The Eliani warships engaged the Zirathi in a pitched battle in the Corvin system. The sleek, angular Eliani vessels unleashed volleys of plasma fire and antimatter missiles at the enemy fleet. But the Zirathi ships seemed to shimmer and phase, their hulls distorting as they manipulated the very fabric of space-time around them. Specialized Zirathi vessels, laden with singularity bombs, hurtled towards the Eliani ships on kamikaze runs. The Eliani point defense systems struggled to lock onto the erratically moving targets. Several Zirathi ships slipped through, slamming into Eliani warships and detonating in blinding flashes of gravitational destruction. The Eliani fleet, caught off guard by the Zirathi's esoteric void manipulation techniques and suicidal tactics, took heavy losses. The once proud armada was forced to execute a hasty retreat, leaving the Corvin system in the hands of the invaders. Brian watched the grim reports coming in, his jaw clenched. He sent urgent warnings to Confederacy Command, advising them to reinforce border systems with additional defenses and fleet units. The Sirathi threat was unlike anything they had faced before. Knowing that the Eliani's pride would keep them from accepting human help, Brian made a decision. He volunteered to stay behind on the Eliani homeworld as an observer and advisor, hoping to relay intelligence on Zerathi capabilities back to the Confederacy. I'll do what I can to help gather information on the Zerathi's tactics and technology, Brian told his superiors over the encrypted comlink. The more we know about their capabilities, the better we can prepare our own defenses against these fanatics. As the Eliani licked their wounds, and the Zerathi continued their relentless advance, Brian settled in for a long and dangerous mission. The fate of not just the Confederacy, but the entire galaxy, hung in the balance. Admiral Singh's battlegroup, 
dropped out of warp at the edge of the Corvin system. The CSV Indomitable, Relentless and Fortitude moved into formation, their scanners probing the void ahead. Sensors report, Admiral Singh ordered, his eyes fixed on the main viewscreen. Sir, I'm detecting debris fields consistent with Eliani ship signatures, the sensor officer replied, her voice tight. No active power signatures or life signs. Singh frowned. Any sign of escape pods? Negative, Admiral. The area is a graveyard. Singh's sons, Arun and Jitendra, watched grimly from their respective bridges on the relentless and fortitude. The devastation wrought by the Sirathi was total. Suddenly alarms blared across the fleet. Admiral, I'm picking up anomalous energy readings, the sensor officer shouted. Multiple contacts emerging from dimensional rifts. Singh leaned forward, his eyes widening as dozens of tentacle-like objects burst from swirling vortexes of distorted space. The Zirathi boarding pods lashed out, latching onto the hull of the relentless like grotesque leeches. Aran, report, Singh barked. They're breaching the hull, Aran yelled over the comm, the sounds of weapons fire and screams echoing behind him. The Zirathi are using some kind of portable warp fields to phase right through our armor. Singh watched in horror as the Relentless's life signs began winking out, the Zirathi slaughtering their way through the ship. Aaron rallied his marines, his voice crackling over the comm. We'll make our stand in the engine room. Jitendra, see if you can find a weakness in their tech. On the fortitude, Jitendra worked furiously at his console, analyzing the sensor data on the Zirathi borders. His eyes widened as he noticed and pattern. Admiral, the Zirathi's power systems are giving off intense thermal signatures. Singh nodded grimly. Recalibrate our plasma cannons to target those heat signatures. Let's see if we can disrupt their shields. The fleet's weapons glowed as they adjusted their targeting parameters. Lances of superheated plasma flashed out, connecting with the Zirathi ships. This time, the enemy shields flickered and died, the plasma burning through their hulls. Faced with an effective defense at last, the Zirathi ships broke off their attack. The boarding pods detached from the Relentless, the remaining invaders retreating back through their warp rifts. In moments, the Zirathi fleet had vanished, leaving the battered Confederacy ships behind. On the Iliani homeworld, Brian watched the sensor feeds from the battle with a mixture of horror and grim satisfaction. The Confederacy had bought a victory, but at a terrible cost. Without the intelligence gathered here, by human sacrifice, the Eliani would have been crippled by the Zirathi's exotic tactics. The Confederacy still had a chance, but only if the Eliani swallowed their pride and worked with their human allies. Brian just hoped they would see reason before it was too late. The Zirathi regrouped after their setback, undeterred in their fanatical crusade. Their fleet surged deeper into Eliani territory, an unstoppable tide of destruction. System after system fell to the zealous invaders, their advanced weaponry overwhelming the beleaguered Eliani defenses. The Zirathi's solar lances, Terrible weapons capable of igniting stars and scouring entire worlds of life left behind a trail of burned-out husks where once vibrant planets orbited. Trillions perished as the Zirathi advanced, entire civilizations snuffed out in their relentless march. Pryla paced his command center, his mandibles twitching erratically as he surveyed the grim reports streaming in. He turned to Brian, his compound eyes reflecting a mix of desperation and fear. The Kanati is stretched to the breaking point, Pryla confided, his voice strained. Our fleets are shattered, our supply lines in disarray. If the Zirathi break through to our core worlds... He trailed off, unwilling to voice the terrible truth. Brian placed a reassuring hand on Pryla's thorax, meeting his gaze. The Eliani are not alone in this fight, Brian said firmly. The Confederacy will stand with you. Together we have a chance. Pryla shook his head, despair etched in his features. I fear it may already be too late for us, my friend. The Kanate, my people, we may fall within months, consumed by the Zirathi's madness. In Confederacy space, the humans fared better if only just. 
the intel gleaned from the costly battle in the Corvin system allowed them to adapt their tactics and technology to better counter the Zirathi's exotic capabilities. Still, several border colonies fell to the enemy's onslaught. The price of survival measured in worlds lost and lives shattered. Jitendra Singh, commanding the CSV Fortitude, led a desperate strike force to evacuate the human mining world of Persephone. Zirathi ships had been detected on approach, and time was running out. But as the Fortitude and her escorts dropped out of warp at the edge of the system, Jitendra was shocked to find a fleet of Eliani warships already in orbit around Persephone. His calm crackled to life, and the image of General Vika, the notorious hardliner, filled the screen. Vika's mandibles clacked in agitation as he spoke. Human vessels, this is General Vikar of the Eliani Kanate. You will surrender your ships and supplies immediately to bolster our war effort against the Zirathi. Comply or be destroyed. Jitendra's eyes widened in disbelief at Vikar's audacity. General, we're here to evacuate our people before the Zirathi arrive. We have no quarrel with the Eliani. Let us pass. Vikar's compound eyes narrowed, his tone cold and unyielding. Your pathetic species has done nothing but delay the inevitable. The Carnate needs your resources to survive. You will submit or perish. Jitendra's jaw clenched, his voice steely with resolve. We will not abandon our own to save your hide, Vikar. The Confederacy stands with Persephone. Vikar hissed in rage, his mandibles flaring. Then you have sealed your fate, human. The Eliani ships opened fire, lances of plasma and missiles streaking towards the Fortitude and her escorts. The human vessels returned fire, their shields flaring as they tried to hold back the onslaught. The Fortitude shuddered under the impacts, alarms blaring on the bridge as consoles exploded in showers of sparks. Shields down to twenty percent, the tactical officer shouted over the chaos. Hull breaches on decks four through nine. Jitendra gripped the arms of his command chair, his mind racing. They couldn't hold out against the Eliani's superior firepower for long, but they had to buy time for the evacuation shuttles to escape. Concentrate fire on their lead ship's engines, Jitendra ordered. We need to disable Vikar's vessel. The human ships poured fire into the Eliani flagship's aft section, their weapons finally breaching its shields and striking home. Explosions blossomed along the enemy ship's hull as its engines went critical. But it was too late. The fortitude, battered and broken, drifted in space, her weapons falling silent as the last of her power died. Escape pods and shuttles fled the crippled ship, desperate to reach the surface of Persephone before the Zirathi arrived. On the Eliani homeworld, Brian stared at Prylar in shock as the Eliani leader relayed the news of Vikar's treachery. I had no knowledge of Vikar's plans, Prylar said, his voice heavy with regret. He has gone rogue, consumed by his own fear and hatred. The Kanate does not condone this attack on our allies. Brian clenched his fists, anger and despair warring within him. With Persephone fallen, and the Eleni now fighting both the humans and the Zirathi, the future looked grim for both races. The fragile alliance, their only hope against the implacable foe, was crumbling. And all the while the Zirathi continued their relentless advance, an unstoppable tide of death and destruction sweeping across the stars. The Eliani homeworld shuddered under the onslaught of the Confederacy's surprise attack, Admiral Singh stood on the bridge of his flagship, the CSV Indomitable, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. The battleship strike force punched through the orbital defences, their advanced shields absorbing the brunt of the enemy fire. Singh gave the order, and a swarm of drop pods ejected from the Indomitable's launch bays. The pods streaked towards the surface, each one carrying a squad of the Confederacy's most elite marines. In the heart of the Eliani governmental palace, Brian sat in a dimly lit cell, his wrists shackled. Vika's loyalists had arrested him shortly after the betrayal at Persephone, and he had been rotting in this prison ever since. Suddenly, the sound of explosions and gunfire echoed through the halls. The door to his cell burst open, and Pryla rushed in, flanked by a group of Eliani soldiers. Brian, we must hurry, 
Pryla said, his mandibles clicking urgently. Vikar's treachery ends today. Brian rubbed his freed wrists and nodded grimly. He picked up a discarded pulse rifle and joined Pryla's group as they fought their way through the palace. Loyalist Eleani soldiers clashed with those still faithful to the Karnate, the once pristine halls now scorched and littered with the dead. They reached the palace's command centre, where Vikar stood defiantly, surrounded by his most fanatical followers. Brian stepped forward, his rifle trained on the rogue general. It's over, Vikar, Brian shouted over the chaos. Surrender now and answer for your crimes against the Alliance. Vikar's compound eyes blazed with hatred. Surrender? To you, human, never! The Eliani must seize the Confederacy's resources by any means necessary to ensure our survival against the Zirathi. The general gestured angrily at Brian, his voice dripping with contempt. Your primitive morals and refusal to sacrifice your colonies for the greater good only prove humanity's weakness. You are unworthy to survive compared to Eliani supremacy. Vikar raised his sidearm, aiming it at Brian's head. The Khanate will be reborn from the ashes of your pathetic confederacy, and the Eliani will rule the galaxy. Just as Vikar's finger tightened on the trigger, a plasma bolt seared through the air, striking the general in the chest. Vikar crumpled to the ground, his lifeless eyes staring at nothing. Prylar lowered his smoking pistol, his mandibles set in a grim line. The Eliani will not abandon our honor or our allies, Prylar declared to the stunned loyalists. Vikar's madness ends here. We fight the Shirathi together, or we die alone. In the aftermath of the raid, the Eleani and the Confederacy agreed to a tense truce, their focus now solely on the Zirathi threat. But the scars of Vikar's betrayal ran deep, and trust between the two races had been shattered. As Brian looked out over the war-torn cityscape of the Eleani homeworld, he couldn't help but wonder if the Alliance could ever truly recover from this blow. The war against the Zirathi loomed larger than ever, and the future of both the Eliani and humanity hung in the balance. They had no choice but to stand together against the coming darkness, for divided, they would surely fall. The battered remnants of the Eliani and human fleets fought a desperate rearguard action, trading space for time as they sought to slow the Zirathi advance. The once proud warships, their hulls scorched and scarred, formed a ragged line of defense, pouring fire into the relentless waves of enemy vessels. Fighters danced and swirled in the void, bright flashes of exploding ships punctuating the darkness. On the bridge of the CSV Indomitable, Admiral Singh stood grim-faced, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. Red icons representing Zirathi ships continued to advance inexorably, overwhelming the dwindling numbers of blue and green that signified the Allied forces. Incoming transmission from Confederacy Command, the comms officer reported, his voice tight with tension. Singh nodded, on screen. The face of Admiral Shu, the supreme commander of the Confederacy's military, appeared on the view screen. The normally stoic officer looked haggard, her eyes haunted. Admiral Singh, I have grave news. Shu began without preamble. Our intelligence has confirmed that the Zirathi have launched a massive armada aimed directly at the human core worlds. Their intention is clear, to strike at the heart of the Confederacy and decapitate our leadership in one decisive blow. Singh felt a cold knot of dread form in his stomach. What are our orders, Admiral? Shu's expression was grim. The bulk of our remaining fleet is being recalled to defend Earth and our other key systems. I'm sorry, Rajesh, but we can only leave a token force to support the Eliani. The survival of humanity must come first. Singh's jaw clenched, but he nodded in understanding. I'll do what I can with what I have, Admiral. Godspeed to you and the fleet. As the transmission ended, Singh turned to his bridge crew. Send word to our remaining ships. We hold the line here, no matter the cost. On the Eliani homeworld, Brian strode into the council chambers, his expression determined. Pryla stood at the center of the room facing the gathered Eliani leaders. Counselors, I come before you with an urgent plea, Brian began, his voice ringing out in the cavernous space. The Confederacy is facing an existential threat. 
the Zirathi have launched a massive attack aimed at the heart of human space. If the Confederacy falls, the Kanate will swiftly follow. The Eliani counselors chittered and clicked, their agitation clear. One of them, an ancient scarred warrior, stepped forward. The Eliani have their own battles to fight, human, the counselor rasped. Your confederacy brought this war to our doorstep and then had the audacity to raid our very seat of government. Why should we bleed for you now? Brian met the counselor's compound gaze unflinchingly. Because we are stronger together than apart. Because the Zirathi will not stop until all other races are ashes. If we do not stand as one, we will surely fall alone. Bryla spoke up, his voice firm. Brian is right. The Kanati cannot hope to stand alone against the Zirathi tide. We must honor our alliance and send aid to the humans in their hour of need. The council erupted into a cacophony of arguing voices, the chamber ringing with the clash of competing agendas and old grudges. Brian and Pryla shared a frustrated look, knowing that precious time was slipping away. Finally, the ancient counselor raised a claw for silence. The council has decided. We will not commit our forces to what we see as a doomed last stand. The Kanat must look to its own defense. I am sorry, but you are on your own. Brian's heart sank, but he saw a glint of determination in Pryla's eyes. As the council disbanded, the Eliani leader pulled Brian aside. There may yet be a way to aid your people and strike a blow against the Zirathi, Pryla said urgently, but it will require great risk and sacrifice. Brian's eyes narrowed. I'm listening. Pryla leaned in close. Our intelligence has identified a weakness in the Zirathi's religious fanaticism. Each of their major fleets is led by a flagship that carries a sacred idol to their star gods. If we can infiltrate that flagship and destroy the idol, it could throw the Zirathi into disarray and buy your fleet precious time. Brian nodded slowly. A surgical strike at the heart of their command structure. It's a long shot, but it might just work. He met Pryla's gaze. I'm in. Let's gather our best warriors and get underway. As they prepared to depart on what could very well be a one-way mission, Pryla placed a clawed hand on Brian's shoulder. The Eliani leader intoned a solemn war blessing in his native tongue, the alien words somehow both guttural and melodic. Brian placed his own hand over Pryla's, feeling the weight of the bond they had forged in the crucible of war. Two species, once wary adversaries, now united by the ties of blood and sacrifice. Together they strode towards the waiting shuttle, ready to take the fight to the heart of the enemy, for the fate of both their peoples hung in the balance. The Zirathi supply ship drifted through the void, its hull pitted and scarred from the ravages of war. Nestled deep within its cargo hold, Brian, Pryla, and Jatendra waited in tense silence, their weapons clutched tight to their chests. The strike team had managed to capture the vessel in a daring raid, and now they used it as a Trojan horse to slip past the Zirathi flagship's defences. As the supply ship docked with the massive warship, the team moved swiftly and silently, dispatching the few guards who came to unload the cargo. They crept through the dimly lit corridors, the air thick with the acrid scent of incense and the distant hum of alien machinery. Suddenly they heard a sound that made their blood run cold, the discordant chanting of Zirathi voices, rising in a fervent crescendo. Peering around a corner, they beheld a scene of madness and devotion. Hundreds of Zirathi warriors knelt before a towering idol, a grotesque amalgamation of twisted metal and pulsing energy. They beat their chests and tore at their flesh, their eyes wild with religious ecstasy. The air shimmered with the heat of their passion, and the deck plates thrummed with the power of their faith. By the stars, Pryla whispered, his mandibles clicking in a mix of awe and revulsion. Their zeal is unlike anything I've ever seen. Brian nodded grimly. It's what drives them, what makes them so relentless. But it's also their weakness. Shatter their faith, and we may just break their will to fight. Jitendra, his eyes scanning the chamber, pointed to a series of glowing nodes embedded in the walls. There, those must be the Psi amplifiers. They're using them to broadcast the idol's influence to the entire fleet, enforcing their unity. The team moved quickly, 
planting antimatter charges at key structural points around the idol chamber. But as they worked, a shout rang out behind them. They had been discovered. Plasma bolts filled the air as the Zerathi guards opened fire, their weapons spitting streams of superheated death. The team dove for cover, returning fire with their own rifles. Brian saw Jitendra fall, a smoking hole in his chest. Pryla leaped in front of Brian, taking a plasma bolt meant for him. The Eleni warrior crumpled to the deck, his exoskeleton charred and cracked. Brian dragged Pryla behind a bulkhead, desperation clawing at his heart. They were out of time. The charges were set, but they needed to detonate them remotely. And with Jitendra gone and Pryla wounded, there was only one option left. Brian snatched up Jitendra's CI amplifier, experimental weapon designed to overload the Zerathi psychic network. He knew that using it would likely fry his own brain, but there was no choice. He had to give the fleet a chance. Closing his eyes, Brian activated the amplifier, feeling the rush of alien thoughts and emotions flooding into his mind. He gritted his teeth against the pain, focusing all his will on a single overwhelming thought. Doubt. He poured every ounce of fear, uncertainty and dread he could muster into the Zirathi hive mind, feeling their iron resolve begin to buckle. The chanting faltered, replaced by shrieks of confusion and dismay. And in that moment, Brian detonated the charges. The idle chamber vanished in a blinding flash of light, the psi amplifiers shattering in a cascade of sparks. The Zirathi's unity was broken, their faith shattered. Across the fleet, ships veered off course, colliding with each other in their panic. The mighty armada, poised to strike at the heart of the Confederacy, disintegrated before Brian's eyes. But the cost was high. As the darkness claimed him, Brian's last sight was of Pryla's broken body and Jitendra's lifeless eyes, the price of their desperate gambit. The Zirathi were in retreat, but the wounds they had inflicted would not soon heal. The war was far from over, and the future was anything but certain. The battered remnants of the Zirathi armada fled before the vengeful guns of the Confederacy fleet. Admiral Singh stood on the bridge of the Indomitable, his eyes hard as he watched the enemy ships scatter and burn. The grief of losing Jitendra was a constant ache in his chest, but it was tempered by grim satisfaction as he saw the invaders being driven back, system by system. Helm, set a course for the Corvin system, Singh ordered. It's time we took back what's ours. The fleet surged forward, plasma cannons primed and ready. They fell upon the Zirathi like wolves among sheep, tearing through their weakened defences with merciless efficiency. At the forefront of the assault was the Relentless, now commanded by Arun. The young captain had grown into a seasoned warrior, tempered by loss and hardship, he led the charge into the Persephone system, the site of the Eliani's earlier betrayal. The Sirathi had established a void bastion in orbit around Persephone, a bristling fortress of eldritch technology and twisted metal. But Arun had a plan. He ordered the fleet to concentrate their fire on the bastion's thermal weak points, just as Jitendra had discovered during the Battle of Corvin. Plasma bolts hammered into the bastion's shields, causing them to flicker and fail. Arun gritted his teeth as he watched the relentless cannons glow white-hot with the strain of sustained fire. But it was working. The bastion's hull buckled and cracked under the onslaught, spilling Zirathi warriors and strange machinery into the void. On the Eliani front, Pryla had recovered from his wounds and was leading his own campaign against the Zirathi supply lines, the Kanati's ships struck like lightning, appearing from the depths of space to sow chaos and destruction before vanishing back into the void. It was a war of attrition, brutal and bloody. The Zirathi fought with the desperate strength of cornered beasts, inflicting heavy casualties on the Allied forces, but slowly, inexorably, the tide was turning. The Eliani and human fleets converged on the Zirathi's last stronghold, a heavily fortified system known as the Void Forge. It was here that the invaders had concentrated their remaining forces and warship production, determined to make a final stand. The battle was a maelstrom of fire and death. Ships on both sides were ripped apart by a plasma torrents, 
and antimatter warheads. The screams of the dying filled the comms channels as the Allied forces pushed deeper into the Void Forge, trading lives for every inch of space. In the end, it was the Indomitable that struck the final blow. Singh led a desperate charge into the heart of the Zerathi defences, the ship's hull scorched and battered but still unbroken. They broke through the last line of enemy dreadnoughts and unleashed a salvo of quantum torpedoes into the Void Forge's central reactor. The explosion was blinding, a miniature supernova that consumed the Zerathi's last hope of victory. When the glare faded, the Void Forge was nothing more than a field of glowing debris and shattered hulks. In the aftermath of the battle, the Confederacy and the Karnati took stock of their losses and their gains. The Zerathi had been shattered, their once mighty armada reduced to scattered bands of leaderless survivors. But the cost had been high and the scars of the war would linger for generations. As the leaders of the Confederacy and the Kanate gathered to discuss the fate of the surviving Zirati, tensions ran high. Some of the Eliani, still bitter over the devastation wrought by the invaders, called for their total eradication. They argued that the Zirati were too dangerous to be allowed to survive, that their fanatical ideology would always pose a threat to the peace and stability of the galaxy. But others, including Pryla, urged mercy and rehabilitation. They pointed out that the Zirathi were a broken people, their leaders dead, and their faith shattered. With proper guidance and oversight, they could perhaps be led down a path of redemption and reintegration into galactic society. The humans, led by a recovering Brian, proposed a middle path. They argued for firm justice tempered with the opportunity for redemption, the Zirathi who had committed the worst atrocities would face trial and punishment, but the rest would be given a chance to prove themselves worthy of a place in the new order. As the debates raged on, Brian and Pryla worked tirelessly to forge a lasting peace between their two races. They knew that the sacrifices of heroes like Jitendra must not be in vain, that the future of the galaxy depended on the Confederacy and the Kanate standing together as allies and friends. It would not be an easy road. The scars of the war ran deep and trust would have to be rebuilt one step at a time. But as Brian looked out at the stars, he felt a flicker of hope. They had faced the darkness and emerged unbroken, and together they would build a new dawn for all the peoples of the galaxy. Brian stepped into the makeshift conference room, his eyes adjusting to the dim light. The air was thick with tension as he made his way to the front of the room, where a holographic projector hummed softly. He glanced at the faces around him, Admiral Singh, his features etched with grief and determination. Prylar, his exoskeleton still bearing the scars of battle, and a handful of other high-ranking Eliani and human officials. Thank you all for coming, Brian began, his voice steady. I know we're all still reeling from the losses we've suffered, but there's been a new development that could change everything. He tapped a button on the projector, and a series of images sprang to life above the table. Ancient Zirathi glyphs and artifacts, their surfaces worn smooth by the passage of time. A joint research team, led by my old friend Dr. Hiroshi Nakamura, has been studying the ruins on the Void Forge, Brian explained, and they found evidence that the Zirathi weren't always the fanatics we fought against. The room erupted in a buzz of surprised murmurs, Brian held up a hand for silence. According to these artifacts, the Zirathi were once a peaceful race, with a rich culture and a deep connection to the cosmos. But at some point in their history, something changed. The researchers believe that an unknown alien intelligence interfered with their development, twisting their beliefs and turning them into the zealots we know today. Admiral Singh leaned forward, his brow furrowed. Are you saying that the Zirathi were brainwashed? Brian nodded. In a sense, yes, their aggression, their fanaticism, it may not have been entirely their choice. The room exploded into argument. Some of the Eliani officials pounded the table, their mandibles clacking in agitation. This changes nothing, one of them shouted. The Zirati slaughtered our people, destroyed our worlds. They must be exterminated, down to the last hatchling. But others looked uncertain their compound eyes flickering with doubt. If they were victims as much as aggressors, 
another Eliani mused. Can we truly condemn an entire species for the actions of an outside force? Freyler raised a claw, his voice cutting through the debate. There may be a way to undo what was done to the Sirathi, to give them a chance at redemption. All eyes turned to the Elani leader. Brian felt a flicker of hope in his chest. The Eliani have long possessed the technology to manipulate the mind, Pryler explained. Combined with human psychological techniques, we may be able to deprogram the surviving Sirathi to restore them to their true selves. Admiral Singh stroked his beard, his eyes distant. And in doing so, we could honor the sacrifices of those we lost. Jitendra, Brian's brother, all the others who gave their lives to stop the Zirathi threat. The room fell silent, each person grappling with the weight of the decision before them. Brian stepped forward, his voice low but intense. I know this won't be easy. The scars of war run deep and the Zirathi have much to answer for. But if we can offer them a path to atonement, a chance to help rebuild what they destroyed, maybe we can find a way forward. Together. Slowly, heads began to nod around the room. It was a tentative agreement, but it was a start. In the weeks that followed, Brian and Pryler worked tirelessly to put their plan into action. They assembled a team of the best human and Eliani psych experts, working closely with Dr. Nakamura's researchers to understand the Sirathi's altered neuropsychology. The first group of Zirathi test subjects were brought in under heavy guard, their faces contorted with a mix of fear and lingering zealotry. But as the deprogramming process began, Brian watched in amazement as the fire in their eyes slowly dimmed, replaced by confusion, then understanding, and finally a profound sense of horror and remorse. One of the Zirathi, a former warrior named Zathak, fell to his knees before Brian and Pryla, his head bowed in shame. "'What have we done?' Zathak whispered, his voice choked with emotion. "'The blood on our hands, the lives we've taken, how can we ever atone for such sins?' Brian knelt down, placing a hand on the Zirathi's trembling shoulder. "'By working to heal the damage that was done, by rebuilding not just the worlds you destroyed, but the trust between our peoples.' As more and more Zirathi were successfully deprogrammed, they began to integrate into Eliani and human society as penitent workers. Some joined reconstruction crews, using their advanced technology to help rebuild shattered cities and infrastructure. Others worked alongside human and Eliani scientists, sharing their knowledge and insights to help prevent future threats. Slowly but surely, the wounds of war began to heal. The sight of Sirathi working side by side with their former enemies was a powerful symbol of hope, a testament to the resilience of the spirit and the possibility of redemption. But even as Brian and Pryler savoured the fragile peace they had achieved, they knew that their work was far from over. The mysterious intelligence that had corrupted the Sirathi was still out there, a looming shadow on the horizon. Brian looked out at the stars, his eyes hard with determination. Whatever challenges lay ahead, whatever threats might rise from the depths of the cosmos, they would face them together, human, Eliani, and Zairathi, united by the bonds of sacrifice and the promise of a better tomorrow. Brian rubbed his eyes, exhaustion etched into every line of his face. The deprogramming of the Zirathi was proceeding slowly but steadily, the once fanatical warriors gradually shedding their zealotry and embracing a new path of peace. But even as the rebuilding of the war-torn worlds began, Brian couldn't shake the feeling that their work was far from over. He turned to Pryler, who was hunched over a console, his compound eyes flickering with data streams. Any luck on tracing the source of the Zirathi's corruption? Pryler shook his head, his mandibles clicking in frustration. Nothing concrete, but I've been in contact with Dr. Nakamura. He believes he may have found a lead. Brian leaned in, his interest piqued. What kind of lead? A trail of psychic residue, leading to a remote star system on the fringes of known space. He's requesting our presence, along with a team of Eliani Saitex, to investigate further. Brian nodded, a grim determination settling over him. Then that's where we're going.
The journey to the forgotten star system was long and arduous, the ship's size shield straining against the growing pressure of an unseen presence. As they drew closer, Brian could feel a creeping dread seeping into his mind, a whisper of something ancient and malevolent. They found the ruins of an alien civilization scattered across the barren planets, crumbling monuments to a species long dead, and there, in the heart of the ruins, they discovered the truth. Dr. Nakamura's voice was grave as he explained his findings. The Zirathi were not the first victims of this entity, nor will they be the last. It's a psionic predator, feeding on the psychic energy of entire species, twisting them to its will before discarding the husks. Freyla's eyes widened in horror, and now it has its sights set on the Eliani and the humans. Brian clenched his fists, a cold resolve settling over him. Then we have to stop it, no matter the cost. They gathered a team of the most powerful psi and warriors from both races, Admiral Singh and Arun among them. Together, they ventured into the heart of the entity's lair, a twisting labyrinth of psionic energy and eldritch technology. The battle was brutal, the Void Whisperer's power tearing at their minds and souls. Eliani and human alike fell before its onslaught, their screams echoing through the twisted corridors. But Brian and Pryla fought on, their bond stronger than any psionic attack. In a final desperate gambit, they joined their minds, combining their psionic abilities into a single, devastating feedback loop. The Void Whisperer shrieked as its own energy was turned against it, its form unravelling in a maelstrom of psychic fire. Brian felt Pryla's presence surging alongside his own, a united front against the darkness. And then in a blinding flash of light it was over. The Void Whisperer was gone, its hold over the Zirathi broken at last. But as the smoke cleared, Brian saw the price of their victory. Pryla lay unmoving, his exoskeleton cracked and scorched. Brian cradled his friend's body, tears streaming down his face. No, no, no. Pryla, don't do this. Don't leave me. But it was too late. Pryla was gone, his life given to save them all. In the days that followed, the Iliani and humans mourned their fallen hero. Brian was inconsolable, the loss of his friend a gaping wound in his heart. But even in his grief, he knew that Pryla's sacrifice had not been in vain. The Zirathi were free, the shadow of the Void Whisperer lifted from their minds, and the Eliani, humans, and Zirathi now had a chance to build a new future together, united by the bonds of shared struggle and sacrifice. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.